Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. In today's video we're going to be working on this 2019 Nissan Qashqai. What we're doing in today's video boys and girls is we are replacing the radiator fan specifically because it has stopped working altogether which is kind of surprising because this thing only has 96,000 kilometers. What is also surprising is that this thing is a pretty penny. This thing is $660 locally at a local Nissan dealership. It's not available aftermarket as far as I can see. I've called like 10 different places and no one has a listing. I've checked online as well and no luck there. So if you run into this issue, hopefully you find a deal somewhere because we weren't able to, which really sucks. We're also going to be replenishing the cooling system because it bubbled over and lost probably about 500 milliliters worth so instead of messing around get the nissan stuff and put it in this has got some special blue coolant it's probably the same as my honda or subaru stuff but whatever until we crack this bad boy open i won't know as for the conditions that the customer had boys and girls essentially they were driving along on the highway and this thing here was sitting in traffic and not moving because there was a crash and it was idling for quite a while and that's when it overheated the other thing that i noticed is the air conditioning system because it was sitting at idle wasn't working very well and I'll tell you a bit about that when we open up the hood but essentially I used that to test whether the fan was kicking in of course it wasn't of course you can't just rely on the air conditioning circuit there is a bit more that you have to do in order to make sure that this thing is completely failed that being said before we crack open the hood on this thing and get started with today's video do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos and uh, yeah let's get to work now a little bit of backstory on this vehicle. It came from the dealership where they had already diagnosed it. I was kind of stunned myself that they had said the radiator fan was dead. Uh, it's not very common for most cars or most quality built cars. Unfortunately, the Nissan hasn't put a quality product in. I'm surprised that this thing's died at only 96,000 kilometers. Nonetheless, whenever you do get a car, if you're a technician out there, you should always diagnose it yourself. Don't always take into account what somebody else said unless they are a trusted source so in order to get my hands on the battery so I could power up my power probe I had to remove this thing here you'll need to remove one clip and then yank up on it there is also this guy here that you'll have to release and then this little nipple here that lands in this rubber piece right here with my power probe connected to the battery we then looked for a signal at the harness which is not visible so I'm gonna reposition the camera now so I can show you the harness okay so in order to get you guys a clear picture I removed this guy I'm probably gonna end up removing it anyhow go ahead and show you guys what's down inside there most likely I would have taken that out anyhow I'm not sure what the process is for removing the radiator fan but like I will find out you guys will find out as well with me now let's go ahead and show you that harness now it's kind of hard for me to get the camera inside here essentially down in this area here you'll you might be able to see a little yellow tab right here that there is the connector for our fan and what I did was disconnected it turned on the air conditioning system to cheat a little bit because whenever you turn on the air conditioning system your fan will operate to cool off your condenser and it's a way to check the system most cars have a control that is actuated now by the computer uh, by the input so your AC system would be an input your cooling system would be an input now if you're doing this for whatever reason on an older car sometime there are separate circuits so check the wiring for your specific application if you're just taking this as a reference video for this one I haven't checked the wiring but I'm pretty sure it's a simple circuit because it's a Nissan we're able to actuate the fan or the fan circuit by turning on the air conditioning system of course it didn't come on so what I did was heated the car up not only to check two things whether it had lost all kinds of coolant because the customer had complained about that as well as it overheating which it didn't because it didn't overheat just like that and to see if the fan would come on which it did Okay, let's see if I can get you guys a better look at that fan. Okay, there you go, right there. So that there is the connector I was talking about. So what you're going to do is pull this yellow tab back. Once you get the yellow tab back, you're going to get a pick or a flat screwdriver. It's hard to see. Well, it's virtually impossible to see, but literally you're going to have to sneak 
again, you'll feel with your index finger, there's a little slot right before that yellow tab. Then what you're going to do is stick your flat screwdriver in there and just pull up on the gray tab. Now do this gently, of course. It's not something that is easy to do, and it's not something that's overly hard. You just don't want to be aggressive with it and break the tab. Then what you're going to do is get a pick, get in behind these clips here, and release them. On either side, there'll be two ears. There's two of them there, and then you have this connector up in the top here same sort of thing what i'll do is i'll show you on this connector which is exactly pretty much the same design as that connector how to remove it okay boys and girls bear with me this is going to be very difficult because i'm holding my camera with one hand and trying to do this other thing with my other hand so just move it back and forth back and forth until it releases like so then what you're going to do is pull this guy up here and then when you get it up you're going to use your other hand because you're not going to be filming this to pull the connector off and that's pretty much the same process for that gray connector on the fan the only problem is i can't freaking show you because i'm doing this oh go up and right <sighs> So I got it back a little bit because that tab is up. Now we're just going to shake it. Ah, there we go. See? Easy, right? It's not that hard. Fucking ears are getting hot. Oh. You know when you start doing something that requires a lot of energy and then, you know, your ears or like other parts of your body just get hot because you're putting so much pressure? Yeah. Don't be a mechanic, boys and girls. That's the moral of the story. It's a stupid job. Uh, I can't say that. I mean, some days are good and other days are just shit, but whatever. Anyhow, that's how you do the other connector. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these guys off camera, and I'll see you back. All right. Uh, some more joys of being an auto mechanic, boys and girls. Uh, you can see these clips here. They're not the hardest things to get out if the design of the product is decent. Unfortunately, Nissan puts this little barrel or cap around this thing, so you can't get it from behind, which makes it very hard. So what you're going to have to do is get it from the top by gently pushing this little tab here back and forth on either side. And the tool of choice is this, a 90 degree pick. Uh, there's three of them like that and then you have uh, another connector that's down here that's exactly what i just explained the easy style of it you're able to because it's on a flat piece of sheet metal access the back and then easily take that out this will probably take you i don't know about five to ten minutes just be gentle because if you break these they don't come with your brand new nissan fan you'll have to buy those stupid things and you don't want your harness flapping around in the wind because well you know it gets caught up on that brand new fan your fan will not work <laughs> and you'll be in the same position again so yeah take your time now our next step here looks like we're going to do some uh, detective work in this area here we're going to pull this panel off on this side as well as on this side here let's just get you a shot of it you're not confused eh yeah we're going to pull that side off as well boys and girls grab yourself a one of those just a cup to put all the crap in one of these to assist this potentially because of all the grime we get up here in uh, north america well in the rust belt this here clip removers makes your life super super good uh, i should put a link to these in my description unfortunately boys and girls i do not have an affiliation page yet so i set one of those back up i'll put a link to it down in the description below so you know can earn some coffee money get yourself a number two phillips and pull these bad boys out they're very small so be careful i don't know what fell there but it sounded like a rock now boys and girls whenever we're moving something gently gently my friends that is the key oh come on right on camera so there's five on this side boys and girls and there's four on this side unfortunately i can't really see the reason why is because i leave that guy off so that it doesn't mess up my camera frame and it looks nicer and yeah no more excuses that is also part of the reason why i say to do things gently because if i was to go at it like a gorilla i would have broke this stupid thing and me and the customer would have cried I would have cried for different reasons, of course, because I would have had to replace it. And she would have been like, dude, what is wrong with you? Anyhow, now what we're looking for essentially is, well, what the hell are we doing? How are we getting this thing out? I'm going to go do some detective work, figure out what the plan of action is here for us, uh, whether we remove this top piece here or not. And uh, I shall see you back, boys and girls. I'm thinking to myself, this here looks like a 
very complicated situation and I'm not really interested in disturbing it just yet and what I've done is I've grabbed this hose here and I have seen uh, potentially the light it is able to move out of the way relatively easy now the second thing I'm looking at here boys and girls is our computer that itself doesn't seem like it's very hard to move so what we're going to do is first things first get the two bolts on the bottom of the fan pull it up release it and then try to wiggle it out of this thing here without pulling too many hairs out so yeah I uh, well Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you where those bolts would be on the car because, well, they're down inside there and there. And yeah, there is no way in hell I'm going to fit the camera down in there. So I'll do the next best thing and I'll show you on the brand new fan where the bolts are. All right, so this here is the top of the fan and this, of course, is the bottom. This is your driver's side where your harness comes into the fan. This is your resistor up top here. And this is, of course, the side that's closer to the passenger side. So you can see here that we have these little pieces on the shroud that clip into the radiator or fall into place and keep it secure. But on the bottom here, you'll see two holes. This one here and this guy here. Those two are where your bolts are. They're two 10 millimeters. You'll have to pull out of your radiator fan in order to release it from the vehicle then you'll have to pull up on it and then wiggle it out judging by the depth of this fan we're probably gonna have to move that computer so maybe I'll just do that and then we'll do the fan okay scratch the computer method we've left it in place for now and what I've done is just move the radiator hose and chucked it behind the fill tube for the transmission. Uh, what we're going to need to do now is stick my big head in here and try and wiggle this fan loose. Well, it would appear, boys and girls, that uh, I have some other shit to take off. Yep. Well, I got other crap to take off, boys and girls. I'll be back. Okay, so some new discoveries have been made on my part. There is a little click type thingy that holds the bottom of the fan in place. So what I need to do is unclip it and then move the full assembly up. The only problem is with that is that this guy here is basically hitting this plastic piece. And so what I'm going to need to do is work on removing this plastic piece that holds in our radiator. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Well, there's our old fan, and it's pretty easy to get out. It's like a five-minute job. Once you get all the rest of this crap out, it's uh, quite easy. So, yeah, let's head over there to the front of the car, and I'll show you what's up. So, what I did was, basically, I tried to release this guy here, the metal piece, just enough so I could sneak it out of place. And, of course, it wasn't enough. So, what I ended up doing was disconnecting the battery then, because I then knew that I would have to disconnect my airbag sensor. Then, I proceeded to start to disassemble this guy here, because there was a 10 millimeter bolt in this region that held on to these air conditioning lines. So, I'll try to get you a better shot of everything. This guy here was holding us back from getting that complete metal contraption out. And in order to access it, we had to release this stupid thing. So you will need to release a 10 mil that's over here, a 13 mil that's over here. That sits right here and also holes in this bracket. You'll also need to release a clip that's on this side here. And then as you work your way over, this here is where your ABS, or wait a minute, uh, your airbag sensor sits. So this harness here will also need to be released. Uh, don't worry about this stuff falling apart. It's normal as it ages. This clip you'll need to be released and you'll need to push this guy back with a screwdriver towards the back of the harness of course and then it'll pop right off of the sensor. Make sure you disconnect your airbag sensor in a proper fashion. Don't break it and make sure before you disconnect it that you disconnect your battery from the negative terminal. There you go. And then you'll have a series of three clips. One here in this hole there, another one here, and another one over here. These ones here are the kind of three-way sort of clips. They're a bit of a pain in the ass, I'll show you. Now the clip remover works well with these guys, but the one that sits over here on this side, you'll need a flat screwdriver for, and the clip remover can assist you, but it's a pain in the ass. Once you get all that crap out, you should be able to slide this guy out of place. Once you slide that out of place, you can then take the 13 mils up top here on either side off and you'll be good to go. Oh, look at that. That looks familiar. 
Is this a Nissan or a Renault product? Well, I'll let you decide. Nonetheless, you will move across to the upper portion of the rad support and you'll see there that the cable for our hood release is still attached, of course, to our hood catch because I didn't remove it and you don't need to. There is no point. Just set it back onto the car and you are good to go. Then it is really easy. Just unclip the fan on either side, that side there, and then on that side there and just pull it right up wiggle it back and forth the only thing you're going to bump is this portion of the rad support here and then the radiator holes you can still leave your holes chucked back there because it will get into your way here and there now of course for you guys who are temperature blind i should have said this potentially earlier but don't work on the car when it is hot that would be a very very bad idea now i'm going to show you how to bench test this thing because it's a real pain in the ass to show you on the car and it's also a real pain in the ass to do on the car as well nonetheless you should have done this before you called your fan bad just to confirm and we're going to take our brand new fan which is made by this company here so eventually that will become an aftermarket part anyhow this thing is a pile of junk because it only lasted 96,000 in its original form so i'm hoping that this thing is superseded to something that isn't a pile of junk anyhow grab your old fan gonna turn it around what you want to do locate those two bastards there essentially we're gonna have to take two alligator clips and power this stupid thing on now boys and girls what i have done is hooked up my negative connector on my power probe to the negative side or what is the negative side on the car now you'll see one thing that's kind of concerning here this thing has quite a bit of flip flap in the blade i can move it around quite a bit uh, so that's kind of uh, kind of weird. Now, with any motor, if you have one side connected to either 12 volts or uh, ground, you're going to have that same signal on the other side. Now, you can see there that we do because my power probe lights up. Now, now to test it, because we have a good circuit, would be to fire this thing on by pressing the positive side. And as you can see there, nothing happens, which tells me two things. This thing is a pile of junk, and the second thing is it's probably really over-engineered and has some bullshit component that's inside here that's used as either a fan controller or some other crap. So what I might do is later on take this bucket of shit apart and see what the deal might be, just to see how ridiculous the automotive industry is getting. Hopefully, when I take it apart all i find is just a regular motor and not some stupid little circuit board with a microchip that uh, <laughs> serves no real goddamn purpose anyhow we can confirm that this thing is a pile of crap now let's go get the other vallejo or however you pronounce it pile of crap that we picked up from nissan and stick it in the car now just to show you guys uh, this one here is relatively stiff you can't really move it around so my hypothesis is is that the armature or bearing in the rear of this fan is let go um, and basically that's what's caused it to fail i don't think the brushes are coming into contact with it i don't know if you could see it on camera but you can move the blade here like a good quarter to three eighths of an inch up and down on either side which means that this shaft is way loose man now i'll show you here that we have our new fan connected uh, you should always check to be honest because you never want to have a headache as you can see there we also have the green signal which means that we have the ground traveling through the winding on the motor which would indicate that it's a good motor uh, but now when we put energy through it or the positive side she spins which of course indicates that the fan is good one thing you can see here boys and girls is that the fan doesn't move what we're going to see i think if i do a video on that old fan is that this guy here has let go from the back so on this portion here probably taking his shit let's see if we can Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. I don't even have to take it apart. There you go, boys and girls. You want to see quality? There's Nissan quality right there. So adjust the camera so you can see it at home. This right here, boys and girls, is a uh, Nissan special. I bet you if we fix that bearing and those brushes are there, this stupid fan would be okay. But who the hell's going to do all that crap? <laughs> Not me, sir. There is the problem right there. This thing's let go and that bearing is probably 
caused it to wear the hell out of the brushes because of the angle of the fan. Uh, of course, I can't say that they've upgraded it because I just pushed on a little sticker over there and uh, that thing has that same little hole there. So we're going to end up with a fan that's dead probably another 100,000 from now. Anyhow, let's go install that pile of junk. Grab your fan and uh, slide her into place nice and gently. Remember, it is a modern day Nissan, which means that there are many, many things that will break if you are overly aggressive. So, easy does it. Remember, there we go. We're almost down inside there. There we go. Salve call. Line it up on both sides. We got one click. Why isn't this one clicking? Are you supposed to click? Well, it didn't click, but it's locked in, so that's good. All right, uh, now that we're here already, uh, there's no point in us waiting. Let's just connect this stupid thing. Slide this garbage through like so. And then what we shall do is clip. Grab a flat screwdriver or a little pick to help because stupid idiots don't make good clips either okay anyhow clip that guy in one two and three for the harness to the radiator shroud and then the connector to the fan Put that on there it would appear so and then click in your lock tab and there we go boys and girls i would like to tell you that you're done but we're not done no no we have those two 10 mils this guy here go on either side i'm not going to film that because you're not going to see anything and uh well uh, anyhow what we're going to do is put these things back in there boys and girls off camera i shall be back that one's going to take you about five seconds to do and this one will take you about 50 minutes because it's a real pain in the ass to get it into the hole and to thread it in so make sure you're you're in a good mood when doing the bolt on the driver's side because man it'll drive you to want to rip your hair out really quick anyhow our next step here is we're going to slide this baby back into place and then we'll start putting all the plastics and whatnot back in their respective homes yeah okay from left to right renault to renault you want to grab this guy and slide it into place gently i think this guy goes like that there you go Oh, hey, come on. Okay, so make sure your air conditioning bracket is in place properly. There we go. Grab yourself a Ugga Dugga gun. What you want to do is wherever it was previously, that's how you want to tighten it back into place. That way you don't have to make all kinds of adjustments. So what is going to be your friend is the dirt and grime that was on your car. Now to explain this so you really understand it, I'll move the camera. What I'm talking about is this shit here. You can see there that we have the outlines of where these bolts used to sit. So what we're trying to do is simply thread these guys in. And make sure that it completely covers up all the brand new paint. That way you know for sure that this guy is lined up where it should be. If you're not covering the paint, you have an issue and you need to fix it because when you go to put back everything else it's going to be hard to line up now it doesn't really matter if the plastics and all that kind of crap doesn't really line up but your hood catch though if that guy doesn't line up it's going to be a pain in the ass so be aware of that of course do both sides i'm not sure what the torque is and i'll tell you i'm not in the mood to look it up on that stupid shop key so we're just gonna we're gonna wing it yeah uh, no more than 15 foot pounds now we are looking at the passenger side boys and girls what we need to do is put back our wonderful bracket for our air conditioning that there is the bolt that come out of the hole that holds it go ahead line that up line it up line it up thread it into place by hand always and then just go ahead and tighten it up. Now remember, very little torque is needed to tighten up an M6 by one bolt, or otherwise known most popularly as a 10 mil. Um, I've had a slew of customers over the last year who have over tightened these little buggers and broken them. 
and when you break them especially on the engine which luckily for the last two has been my luck it is a nightmare to get out uh, that will be coming to you in another video on an rsx the honda fit we didn't have time to do a video because we were having to go home and then cry ourselves to sleep anyhow that's a story for another day boys and girls with this out of the way we can now put this piece of junk back into place ah look at that eh we're moving right along. What you're going to do with that guy there is just slide it into place nice and gently. You don't want to be aggressive, that's for sure. And the second thing is you want to make sure that you can get it in there without breaking it. You know, maybe I should have put those bolts on after securing this stupid thing because it would have made my life slightly easier. Shall we do this, Jimmy? That is the question now. You know what? I'm going to make my life easier. So basically, to make my life easier, I've taken off my 13 mils. I've moved this back. I've left the 10 mil in place. I'm gonna slide this stupid thing into place and then put our steel garbage back in. So that way you don't have to mess around with moving stuff and whatnot and being extra, extra, extra careful. Now what you need to do is when you get the plastic down in there, Make sure you get it in there and line it up with the plastic tabs that hold your radiator into place. There's three of them on this particular setup, so be aware of that. Don't push them down all the way because you're going to have to slide this guy back into place now. Like so. And there we go. Okay. And now we can go ahead and put the rest of our bolts and all that crap back. Oh, look at this Nissan. What a pile of junk. The negative tab has eroded away. Wonderful. What a piece of shit. So I have to fix that now too. I do keep in mind, boys and girls, that this thing has 96,000 kilometers on it. And look at that. Maybe like two or three strands worth of wire there. Look what a fucking pile of crap. Anyhow, uh, so we'll fix that off camera because no one cares about how to fix a horn. Uh, just do yourself a favor and disconnect yours because we don't want the same shit to happen. Okay, so let's see if we can get you guys a better look at what's going on in the plastic cover area over here and over there. Well, these are the tabs here for aligning the uh, radiator. Uh, this is the radiator portion here. I don't know what that one is there, but make sure it lines up. As you can see, everything pretty much lines up now. And there's our other radiator tab there. Now, before we put anything else in, you're going to drive in the the bolt that's in the front here and these two on this side you're also going to drive them in on this side and this guy here now remember same advice as before line up those circular little holes blow out all the dust and crap as well and bolt them up okay we'll do this side so you guys can see what's going on thread them all up what you're going to do is line it up as best you can and then just fire these guys home Then grab the long bolt that would have come out of your rad support there, thread it home. It's kind of challenging to get in here. On this side, you can get in relatively easy. On the other side though, you're gonna need something like this. This is a ultra shallow 13 mil. This is made by a company called Signet. I don't even know if they're still around, but uh, they used to make some fairly decent stuff. There we go. Now you can tighten these guys down. And now, essentially, we can keep going across and putting stuff on. Our next step here would be to put on our horn. Of course, I've got to do this stupid wire rip here now because Nissan's a bucket of shit, but whatever. Uh, slide that guy into place like so. And just thread it on by hand. Connect your connectors, of course. Uh, well, connect to repair, Jimmy. Remember? Duh. And we'll use this guy to thread it up. Okay, now here's the tricky part. You need one of these stupid things, and you're going to stick it in the side here. You'll see the hole. It's really hard to get on camera, but essentially, you got to get this plastic secured back to this plastic header panel sort of piece there so make sure you set it up nicely this plastic piece has to be in front or on this side of this piece of plastic and go ahead and throw that clip in there that is the hole that i'm talking about of course get your ultra slim hands in there if you have ultra slim hands and uh, oh come on try your absolute best 
not to do what I just did and drop this thing. At least I dropped it on the radiator. Well, what I would like to say, I can't say, uh, grab one of these and uh, yeah, thanks Nissan. It's definitely not what I want to say. Is it lined up? Oh, that's funny. I can get it in the hole. There we go. Of course, because this thing is slightly behind, if you have one that's slightly bent, that'll help you. That's the result that you want, boys and girls, right there. Clip in the hole. Okay, over here, you want to grab this 10 mil and shove it back in. Oh, good lord. You don't appear to be sitting properly. What's your deal? Should loosen that 13 mil up. I think the shroud's slightly over. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not all fast cars, fun games here in the sweatshop, boys and girls. In fact, it's never fast cars or fun and games in the sweatshop, boys and girls. It's just regular shit boxes. Because that's how I roll. I used to do performance stuff back in the day. Nothing crazy, just, you know, swaps and whatever sort of stuff people wanted me to do. But then the performance world, for the most part, got ridiculously cheap and annoying. You know, everybody wants to go fast for 500 bucks. Not interested. No sir, Rebob. No tanks, bud. So, this section here is pretty much done. We got these clips here we got to put in. I might as well put them in. This here is the clip. You can see it's slightly different. I don't know why they use different clips. It's a Nissan. Now we'll move over to the midsection slash other side and we'll get that all finished up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead Grab this harness here and slide it into place. Uh, do yourself a favor, make sure there's no crud or crap in there. Slide it in. I think I should pop, of course it doesn't want to. So let's get our handy dandy flat screwdriver and we'll help this stupid thing cooperate by pushing it back. There we go. Then clip this stupid thing back in. We're moving right along, boys and girls, right along. Now, something that was kind of stupid to me but well will probably confuse you guys at home as well is instead of putting in a bolt in this section they used this type of clip so just you know yeah we'll put the dirty one back where it's supposed to be and then of course this hole here requires this sort of clip here again don't don't ask me why I, I don't know or care and then over here you slide this guy back into this section here and of course your last clip is this guy and that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is go right to this section here and thread up our bolts. Remember, shallow ones up top and then your long one in the front. As I was saying before, boys and girls, this one's quite hard to get in there with just a regular ratchet and socket. If you have something like this, you'll be really happy because it's quite easy to get in there. I don't know why they use such a long bolt. Uh, Nissan and yeah well, to hell with that we have power tools baby torque is boys and girls don't goddamn break them and don't put them in so loose that they fall out all right okay boys and girls we can go ahead now put our top cover back on uh before i do that i'm gonna go ahead and test the horn because i just finished that stupid wiring repair uh before you go ahead and test the horn boys and girls it is advised that you put your negative terminal back on otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy okay let's try that all over again I can confirm, boys and girls, that is a solid repair. Okay, don't forget to tighten down that 10 mil on your battery terminal. Okay, go ahead and slide this big plastic crap back into place. Now I'll get the 600 bolts that hold it. What you're going to do is get this little screw, you're going to pull up on this guy here, and thread it into place. Do the same thing for either side. Then hold it there with your finger. Remember, boys and girls, it is just a small screw. Do not over tighten it because you'll strip the stupid thing and uh, well, then the screw will have absolutely no purpose. Put the clips back. And now, the rest of the screws. Well, at least they use screws and not some janky stupidness that they come up with in some retarded lab in, in uh, France there. Oh, I mean Japan, because this is supposedly still a Japanese car. Thread them all in, boys and girls, and then fire them home. Nice and slowly. 
good to go. Now before we go ahead and put all of our plastic crap back, it is a good idea to test the Nissan junk that you just put in there. What you want to do is fire the car up, turn the air conditioning on because that will activate the circuit for your radiator fan and of course turn it on. If it's not working or your fan doesn't come on, which in turn means it's not working, well, you've got some issues that tissues won't solve. And our fan is running. That is a thumbs up for me and you. Well, at the very least for me. All right, let's put all the rest of this crap back together. Now, two things. If you have not replaced or are unaware of the status of your air filter, this is the absolute best time now to check it. I can obviously see the condition of mine and it is good. What we need to do now is slide this guy back into place. Uh, there is this little pathway here. Make sure that this pathway lines up with this guy here. So if it doesn't, well, I'm gonna suck in all sorts of dirt for no real reason and you won't be happy. What's your problem there, Nissan? There we go. Put your clip back in. Another good thing, boys and girls, is to move the hardware for the other piece here off of the battery before you put this thing back in. Yeah, uh, these are the two suckers I'm talking about. Uh, I swear to God, I am a professional mechanic. Depends on the day though. Today is a doomy, gloomy sort of day outside and it's nice and cold, so my brain is frozen because it's now adjusting to the uh, the uh, the winter that is upcoming make sure that guy clips in there put your 10 mil and then your clip back in now boys and girls with all your clips back in place don't forget to tighten this guy down of course remember it is a 10 mil so snug and you know no more than like eight foot pounds is more than enough for this thing so that's pretty much it all we need to do now for our particular situation is go ahead top the system up with coolant and we are good to go Put that radiator hose back where it wants to be. Don't forget it where you left it because that can also cause a very big issue that tissues won't solve and definitely another overheating situation. With that out of the way, let's move our attention over to the overflow tank. This here, boys and girls, is our overflow tank. Now you wanna top this thing up only when it is cold. Do not open this thing when it is hot. It poses a serious danger if it is hot because you'll have a bunch of hot steam coming out of here and it will scold your hand. Now we need to fill this thing up to the max. Uh, the max Max sign here is of course hidden because it's Nissan. I that it, like you could see all around the back here. I don't see anything on the back there. I see the max sign right goddamn here. So you'll have to sneak your eye in between there and look at the level until it comes up to the max sign. I don't understand who designs these cars. Just stupid. Let's make sure it's the blue crap. I'm literally having to contort my head to like a weird 90 degree angle. Makes no goddamn sense. Okay. Okay, we are full. Now what we need to do is run this stupid thing. Uh, and once we run it up to temperature and whatnot, uh, we will confirm that this thing is full or I'll get the customer to visually inspect it tomorrow to make sure that it is nice and full. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know why they would hide the level indicator behind all this shit, but whatever. Well, boys and girls, that's pretty much all she wrote for this thing. Um, I haven't forgotten. This stuff here is someone living underneath the uh, hood of the vehicle. It's a rent-free uh, tenant, and we're going to blast the remnants of its home out from underneath the engine bay and give it a nice wash and make it look pretty. But that is pretty much all she wrote for this one. If you don't mind working with Nissan's stupid engineering department and its retarded way of doing certain things, uh, this is definitely a job that you can do in the driveway at home. Not the most challenging, that's for sure, but there are some things that'll kind of drive you nuts, unfortunately, like the overflow bottle and the placement of that uh, bolt for the rad fan. Anyhow, I hope this thing helped you. Fuck, I need a drink. Well, boys and girls, that's all she wrote for this one. Hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. Of course, if you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. What else is surprising is that... <laughs>
I can't find this thing aftermarket anywhere. This seems to be a, oh for fuck's sakes. Stupid compressor. Okay, boys and girls. So in order to get you guys a clear picture, I took this, oh for fuck's sakes. I don't know if you can see it actually. No, you can't see it. I gotta reposition this whole fucking train. God damn. So I'm gonna go do some uh, investive investigatory investigatory okay boys and girls uh hold up let me get a light because ain't nobody gonna see shit there we go that's a little bit better now this here is the top of the fan and these here's these here's oh boy jesus okay so this here is the top of the fan i just went like this instead of the top of the fan that is fucking retarded okay so this here on the Oh man, Jimmy, this is not that hard. You can see here that we have these little clip sort of sections where it falls into the shrouding on the radiator. Wait a minute, this is the shroud. Stupid. The only other reason... Ah, uh, the fuck am I saying? <laughs> oh, look at that, boys and girls. Surprise, it's a Renault product. Or at least the Renault has its hands up the Nissan arse. Oh, it looks like Renault might have its hand up Nissan's arse. Renault looks to have their hand up Nissan's arse and is potentially playing it like a puppet. Just unclip the flat. Fucking camera, cooperate. Essentially, you're going to have to take two alligators. Usually, with most older fans, there is no negative positive. It's going to run in one direction uh, if you mix up the polarity, and the opposite if you do the polarity in the correct position or whatever is correct for the. That made no fucking sense. Oh, come on. What is your fucking deal, bud? Gigabytes is something. What is that? Gig GB? Yeah, gigabytes, right? I'm not gonna pretend to be a computer smart person. I'm I'm just not. Of course, do I don't know what that quite is. Oh, like why the fuck? Where the fuck did I put the tool? Son of a bitch. Oh come on! I just fucking had it, man. Yeah. 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 I can't do a thumbs up. This is bullshit. Plastic crap back in place. Okay. Okay, yep. Yeah. Fuck. We're not checking it here, so grab this thing. Well, we we can obviously seize our seize? Oh god word. Push that guy in. And then why why aren't you oh you fucking bitch. Okay. Oh we didn't get it. We did not get it, son of a bitch. Uh where the fuck are you? I shall look around for it and find it. Don't go crazy on it. Just a couple of... Couple of what? That doesn't make no sense. It poses a really, really dangerous situation to yourself and whoever's hands are on that thing. That make no fucking sense. I'm tired. What we need to do is fill this thing up to the max... Where the fuck is the marking for this cocksucker? You fucking serious, Nissan? You, you gotta be fucking kidding me, right? Okay, you dumb motherfuckers. Okay. Anyhow, 